For a mapping from a key to a value, where the value takes up exactly 32 bytes. Then the EBM storage slot, where the value is stored, is given by taking the catchac 256 of the key and slot where the mapping is declared. But how about the case for a nested mapping? Let's say that we have a nested mapping from key 0 to key 1 and then from key 1 to a value. In this case, how do we compute the slot where the value is stored? And again, we assume that value takes up exactly 32 bytes. The slot where the value is stored in this case is calculated by taking a nested catchac 256. Here I'll show you an easy way to remember. Let's start with a simple mapping, not a nested mapping, just a simple mapping from key to value. So in this case, the slot where the value is stored is given by this. So I'll just paste it here. This is our starting point. We first replace this key with key zero. This is the first key for a nested mapping. And then we take another catchac 256. And then for the first input, we'll put in key one. This will be the slot where the value is stored. Take the catchac 256 of key one. With it, you take the catchac 256 of key zero and slot where the mapping is declared. The difference in how the slot is calculated between a nested mapping and a simple mapping is that a nested mapping takes the catchac 256 and then takes another catchac 256. Let me give you an example. Let's say that we have a mapping from address to another mapping, address, and then to uint 256. I'll call this map. And let's say that we have address 0 and we have address 1 and we have some kind of value stored. To calculate where this value will be stored, we will first compute this part. And to compute this part, we'll first need to compute this part. Key 0 will be in this case address 0, slot where the mapping is declared. This mapping is declared in slot 0, so here we'll put in a 0. And key 1, key 1 will be address 1. And this will be the slot where the value is stored. Let's actually test this by using the assembly to calculate the slot where the value is stored. First, I'll initialize some constants, address 1, address 2, and address 3, and then fill in the map. Mapping from address 1 to address 2 will store 11. Mapping from address 2 to address 3 will store 22. And mapping from address 3 to address 1 will store 33. We'll be using the values stored in this mapping for our next example. So I'll create a function, test nested mapping. It's going to take in two inputs, the two keys that will identify the value for the mapping, address key 0 and address key 1. And this will return the value that is stored in this mapping, which is unit 256. We will use assembly to get the value that is stored in a slot. Next, I'll write the code to calculate the slot where the value is stored. So I'll copy this, and then I'll paste it here. We'll write the code for the inner catchac 256 first, and then we'll write the code for the outer catchac 256. So let's say bytes 32, the inner one I'll call it S0, is equal to take the catchac 256 of key 0 and the slot where this mapping is stored is in slot 0, so I'll say uint 256, and then 0. Now we'll need to abi encode this parameter, so I'll say abi.encode key 0 and uint 256. So this code will calculate the inner catchac 256. Next we'll get the outer catchac 256, say bytes 32 s1 equals catchac 256 abi.encode, and then for the first input, we need key one. Key one will be from the input, key one. And the second input will be the inner catchac 256, which we computed over here. So I'll say S2. S1 will be the slot where the value is stored. To get the 32 bytes that is stored in the slot, we'll use assembly. B is equal to S load S1. And I'll name this output as UN256 B. Okay, let's try deploying this contract. I'll hit Control S to compile the contract, and then we'll deploy the contract. First, I'll get the values for address one, address two, and address three. Next, we'll call this function test nested mapping and try to get these values. Let's try getting 11 first. I'll copy address one for key zero and address two for key one. Call the function and I get a 11. Let's try getting 22. Copy the address of address two for key 0, and copy address 3 for key 1. Call the function, I get a 22. And lastly, we'll try to get 33. Key 0 is address 3, and Q 
key one is address one. Call a function and I get a 33. 